Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Cami Travis-Groves, Cyrus McCall, and Simon Coles. The question I would like to ask, assuming that reaching your potential is never ending, how do you enjoy the journey? Simon, can you kick us off? So I, I think one of the problems is that society wants to make us feel guilty for the bits of the journey we have not yet done, rather than mm. give us credit for the bits we've already achieved, as it were. So I think possibly cutting ourselves some slack and each other some slack and just celebrating what we've achieved so far because it is a never ending journey and, and one would hope would continuously improve in some way whatever way you want to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would like to break this down even further and look at what is your potential and mm -hmm. what is it that you desire what is it that you want to accomplish so many people are on autopilot and they don't recognize the thing they're striving for they're just on doing day to day thinking, okay, well, I got to get to next week. Hmm. But what is the bigger picture? And then if you if then you take that idea of, okay, I want to become a better person, or I want to write a book, or I want to get a degree or whatever those things are, that is the contentment or happiness goal, you've got to understand that happiness always precedes success. Hmm. So if you're striving, there has to be joy in the striving. We mm. we'll never find it because our journeys are never over. It's mm. over when we're dead. Yeah, when you slide in sideways into the grave, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> going, woo, what a ride. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of going off of what Cami just said, I think one thing that's been really prominent for me in the last couple of months is not necessarily putting a specific goal on a day or on an event or on a future experience, but really trying to live in the moment and trying to stay very present with everything that comes. I think oftentimes I'll put calendar dates on and I'll be so excited and I'll think for weeks about how that experience is gonna go, what my goal is, what my intentions are. And while that's a very productive way to experience something, it really limits me from experiencing all the tiny steps that lead up to the event or the experience. So finding contentment and happiness and gratitude in every single moment is really important to me, as well as finding intention for those future goals and those future experiences. Hmm. Wonderful way to boost your own good hormones is to put something on the calendar to look forward to. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. And I love that you mentioned breaking things down into smaller steps. Baby steps is mm -hmm. fantastic way. Like this week, I'm going to get these two things done. And then when you do, you can allow yourself to celebrate your accomplishments. Like you're hiking up a mountain and you pause to look at the view and say, you know, I was way down there and now I'm here. Yeah, me. Right. I know this might be controversial. I worry about goal setting. Hmm. I, I worry about the sort of almost arrogance of saying, I'm going to go and achieve this and then attaching your joy and, and your sense of accomplishment to that when a little bit of allowing an emergence and these people who sort of go, I want to be vice president of such and such in five years time. Why do that to yourself? Why not just say, I'm going to wake up every day and have mm. a good day and do things that bring me joy? Mm. Well, as a chronic box ticker, and obviously the oddball in this group, I can tell you, I have to work really hard to not doctoral degree, check, business, check, and, and move past things and have these goals and move through them. And so becoming content with the unfinishedness of being human has been a journey for me, has been something that I've had to learn. But that said, lack of goals sounds very willy nilly and, and unstructured to me. I don't know that that would work well for Robin. I completely understand that. But I go in general directions. I, I, I allow the world and myself to refine the, the end destination. And I think people are too specific. Like, there's something about mm. being very specific about goals. And that makes me, it's kind of like you're setting yourself up to ignore everything else that might happen in between you there. Mm. I encourage my, my clients to imagine and understand how they want to feel and have that be the goal. And that way, when opportunities come that feel the same, they can lean towards that and it might be something they never expected. My end goal yeah. is not a title or a, it, it's not a, you know, like I'm a VP of something. It's how do I want to feel? Mm. And it's a much more attainable goal. Studies show that people who do that get there faster and are mm. happier. And we know that happier people are more successful. They make more money. They're healthier. They live longer. So 
that the the journey for me, the goal of the journey is happiness, good juju. And the end destination could take any number of shapes and I don't I don't prescribe that. I don't put that in a box. Yeah. Hmm. And, and I think that um, being very clear about the end goal being happiness or whatever allows people to make trade-offs between their work and personal lives. Whereas if people, you know, often when we say goal setting, it's isolated to one specific area, often professional. Hmm. Um, and unfortunately. Yeah. And then they ruin their personal lives, but achieve some arbitrary goal they made up a few years ago. Doesn't make me happy. I really love this, what you said, Cami, about imagining the feeling that you might feel mm. when you attain a goal or when you um, have something that you've been longing for. Something that I like to practice is uh, when I want to manifest something new, I want to create something new. I do that exact thing. I like to sit with what feeling might I have when I receive this. And lots of times it's really interesting the way that the world will provide exactly what I've asked for. And sometimes I haven't asked specifically enough. And so I'll get something that I didn't realize I wanted. <laughs> um, and sometimes I'll get exactly what I wanted, but it'll look totally different than how I had imagined it. But um, overall, I'm getting exactly what I'm wanting. So really, I love what you're saying about leaning into what, what those feelings are and also getting very specific about what that feeling is. <laughs> it's about specifying the feelings you want to have rather than the physical manifestation of how those feelings arise. And that's the problem with our culture is we, we define often in material ways our goals. Right. I will have this rather, car, I'll have this yeah. job, I will have yeah. this partner. And then I'll be happy and of course you probably won't right. be. Whereas if you just say, I, I want to be happy, I want to be content. The aspect of potential, how does that fit into this? Because if, if I have potential and I have this feeling that goes with the potential, can that potential be wasted in some way? If you are imagining the, the best future you that you can and how it would feel to be that best future you, then that is your potential. And I, I am complete science nerd. So I think that we recognize the, the breadcrumb towards that particular path that would lead us there. We recognize that feeling if we, if we are intentionally occupying the emotions of our future successful self. Does that make sense? No, I, I'm lost. I... I, I <laughs> I, I, how are you going to measure your potential? Are you going to measure it by by position, by material things, or are you going to measure it by emotion? And you know, you can go into the spiritual traditions, and they don't define success or your potential by what you have and whatever it is, man, eye of needle, or something like that, and camels, or something like that. It's about the person you become and the relationships you create and the emotional state you're in. So I think we all have the potential for being our best selves in whatever way. And yeah, rock on, you know, I, I want to be at peace with myself and, and in a generous, loving relationship. That'll do. Hmm. Nobody said a Porsche in that. So is wanting a Porsche a bad thing? No, I, no, I think but you're I'd setting love yourself to get... a failure. Sorry. I was just going to say, I'd love to get to the root of, of what the desire is in a Porsche or in a house or in a mm. partner that all goes down to a much deeper root desire of, um, you know, emotional connection or worthiness. It all goes down to, I think, like these deeper feelings that we are trying to band-aid with materialistic obsessions. Mm. So yeah. we could ban advertising. <laughs> Seriously. And you know? reality shows with really rich people running around doing ridiculous things. Yes. Right. And, and it looks like they're fulfilled in all of these ways where we couldn't possibly understand any of their subconscious um, inner monologue. And then you find out they've been deeply depressed and addicted to drugs for almost the entire length of the series. Yeah. Mm. Sure. yeah. Absolutely. So I think what I'm hearing is that to be content with the unfinishedness of the journey of reaching your potential, whatever that means, we have to hold it loosely. And define it on the basis of our inner being, not yeah. on our external you know, mm. things or positions or things like that. If, someone, if it's external, someone can take it away from you. Mm. If it's internal, yes. no one can take it away from you. Well, nice. that is a fabulous way to end a 10 minute conversation. So thank you so much. I knew it would be spiritual when I brought the three of you together and I appreciate you talking to me. I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon. Thank you. Thank you.